Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. So today we're going to be talking about some popular spring summer trends. So some of these nail designs I've started to notice people are doing all the time. Some of them are old, classic. So we're gonna be covering how to do a perfect French, nice high arch French look. Swirls, they're very popular now. Swirls in all different shapes. I know a lot of new techs sometimes have trouble kind of get in that swirl so we're gonna go over that and also flowers so not just like roses and the long petal flowers I do have a video that I did do with flowers if you missed that you can check that out but these are different type of flowers more in spring wide open like a four petal type flower so we're gonna be going over that right now So classic French look. So whether you're using white or you're gonna be using a color, so what we notice now, we see a lot of that nice high arch French. So let me go over how we can create this look. So whether you're doing 10 fingers French look or you're just doing one accent finger or something, you should be able to nail a French look. French is something that should always look as perfect as possible. This is why they used to throw this into the state board for New York years ago because it's just something that I think every tech should nail how to do a perfect French. So I'm gonna show you some tips on how you can get that nice, perfect looking French high arch now. So what I'm gonna be using is Young Nails Sheer Pink as a base under color, white of course, a long striper brush, a angled brush that I'll use to clean up, And of course, my regular cleanup brush and some acetone. So first, I'm going to apply a thin layer of that sheer pink. And again, if somebody wanted to do a different color and or you wasn't you 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 aren't using white, you can use any color. Obviously, you want to. I'm just doing a classic look. So now that that's painted, I'm going to go ahead and cure that. Once that's cure. I like to take a lint-free wipe and wipe off the tacky layer. I explained this when I had that draw video that I came out with that if you are drawing on top of gel, you should wipe it. It makes it so much more easier. So I'm gonna take my striper brush and what I'm gonna do is just begin to outline where I want this arch to go. So we wanna do a nice high arch. We see this trend happening where it's kind of starting all the way almost by the cuticle, that far down on the side, and then coming up into a, ni a nice high arch. So I'm gonna draw that, make sure that that line is even, that it's on the same place on the left and the right. Then I'll go ahead and do my free edges and then I'm going to just fill that all in and shape up as needed. Now I'm just gonna go back in and just fix anything that I see that needs to be fixing, making sure that that French is nice and even on the left and the right side. And I wanted to leave all the demos in this video. The, I did not speed this up at all. All of these are the actual time it takes me to kind of do these nails. Now with that angled brush, I'm going to go and clean the nail. So what I like to do, and I do this on a real person as well, I'll tell them to turn their hand over and flip it so I can see that arch 
from a different angle. I feel that that's a little bit easier to kind of push and get that arch a little bit better as opposed to doing it upside down. The angle on the brush helps so much, especially by the highest point of the angle. It helps when you want to just come around and get that nice arch in the center and then drag it on the side. The angle really helps you. So all these are listed on my website. Uh, there's a link in the description box below to the supplies that I'll be using in this video. Okay, so as you can tell, I'm very anal. So once I finish making sure that that looks as perfect as can be, I'm gonna go ahead and cure that. And then we have a nice high arch classic French look. So I'm gonna go and do a second layer because I'm using white polish. I do like to do my French with gel paint because it's more pigmented and again, you, I just went through all this work to get this arch straight. Now you can just trace the line, but there are instances where, you know, you will mess up again or that second layer. So I like to use gel paint. So it's one and done when I have to do a second coat, I don't really care for it, but I mean, it is what it is. So just so you know, you know, using gel paint in French is, I find that is a little bit easier because most likely you can just get away with doing one coat. So you don't have to go through the whole cleaning, cleaning up process again. After that second layer cures, then it's all done. 
swirls. Swirls are super popular. They are, I love the look. It's like simple, but it's like elegant. It's a nice look. You can do it with so many different colors, so many different ways. So I'm gonna show you the basics on how to start with swirls, maybe like with two, three colors, just kind of, and then as you venture out and get a little bit better with that, you can explore different variations of a swirl design. So we saw that again, very popular last year. It's back again this year, heavy. So let's go over how to do some nice swirls. So the supplies I'm gonna be using for this is that same sheer pink by Young Nails. And I'm gonna be using three different colors by McCart. You wanna use colors that complement each other. They don't necessarily have to be in the same color family, but you just wanna use something that complements roughly a light, a dark, a medium tone. It, it, you know, you just have to kind of have an eye for the three colors or the, the, the client will tell you the colors that they want and you can kind of go around that with what will be complimentary. So I just swatched those three colors so you guys can see what I'm gonna be using. And then again, with my long striper brush and optional glitter. So I'm gonna paint that first layer of that sheer pink and then I'm gonna cure that. After that cures, I'm gonna wipe that again because I'm gonna be drawing on it and then I'm gonna prepare with my first color. When doing swirls, I think a lot of the times the problem is people get a little fixated on the swerve of the swirl. So start by just doing a basic swirl. So you see this swirl looks like nothing. I just did a little something just to see, just to kind of get me started somewhere. Then what I'm gonna do is go in and work the ends. So I'm gonna give that end piece just, just a little bit of a tail. Then I'm gonna go in and just exaggerate all the, the curves that are on that first swirl. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of exaggeration and fill it in. And then I'm gonna do that for the next curve and then again for that next edge. So you wanna just like flare out the ends and exaggerate the curves, that's it. But don't try to do it the first go round. It's gonna be a lot harder. Just do a little something and then go in after it and fix it and make it a little bit more fancier. So now I'm gonna go in with my second color. So it's up to you where you wanna place your colors. You know, you want the brightest in the middle, you want, you know, sometimes swipe, um, putting it on the paper towel like how I did before, just so you see how they play out next to each other, will kinda help you out if you're struggling as to what color you wanna put next to what, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead with this, the second color and do the same thing. I'm just gonna give it a little something right next to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and exaggerate the ends, exaggerate the curves and do the same exact thing.
Now I'm gonna go in with that last color and I'm gonna put that on the opposite side. Again, it's however you want it. You do wanna just take note when you do that first swirl of something's gonna be left or right. Sometimes that'll determine if I'm gonna go, you know, all the way to the right with the design or I'm gonna make that the first one will be the middle. It doesn't have to always go like that. Sometimes the person's finger is gonna determine how you need to swirl it. So you have to take a look at that. But it's like, again, it's one of those designs where no one can look at it and say, this is wrong. You did this wrong. So don't think too much about it. I find that those are the hardest designs to do is the ones where you have to kind of let go and just let it be. So after I do that set, that third swirl, I'm going to go ahead and cure that. So to use glitter is optional. Sometimes I'll do a whole set and I'm like, it needs something. So I feel like I, I like adding a little bit of glitter to my swirls, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that Young Nails glitter and then a small liner brush because now I want this line to be super thin. So I'm gonna go with the thinnest brush. This is the thinnest brush that I own. And I'm just gonna see where I want it to go. If I want it to go there, if I want it to go there, and I'm gonna determine it sometimes if I have a little bit of a mistake somewhere or a little ugly spot that I'll make that where I make the glitter. So I'm kind of covering up where those two colors met. Maybe I didn't like the way it blended or whatever. So in this case, I didn't really have a reason to put it there. I just put one um, swirl there and then I'll go in on the opposite side on the end and just do another one. So again, you want this to be like super thin. If you choose to make glitter its own swirl next to the color, by all means, you can do that as well. Sometimes I like just a little hint of glitter, but not necessarily a whole swirl of glitter. Once that cures, it's all done. So there goes swirls. Flowers. Flowers are always popular when springtime comes around. So I'm gonna show you how we can create a nice open flower look 
in 3D using acrylic. As I go through this, uh, you'll see me throw in different colors, different accents and other colors that you can use, but let's just talk about, let's practice on the basic foundation. So let's just go over how we can create this 3D flower look using acrylic. So for the 3D flowers, I just have the regular acrylic color and I'm going to be using these pastel colors by Valentino. One is like a soft pale blue and the other is like a soft uh, greenish jade color, whatever you want to call it, minty. It's so light and pale, you can barely see it on camera, but it's a blue. Um, I'm going to go with the a darker green that's gonna be for the leaves. And then I'll use some other things later on, as you'll see. And of course, I'm gonna need some monomer. And I'll be using a sculpting art. So this is a brush, a Kalinsky brush that is made for sculpting. So before I begin, I'm going to paint that nail with some top coat. Again, I don't like to cover my flowers. I feel like you lose the details when you cover it in top coat after. So to make sure that the something is, has top coat in or I don't have to go around it, I like to just put top coat on and then I'll do my flowers on top of that. So I'm gonna go with a little bit, a little bead and just place that right onto the nail. So we're working fairly dry. So we wanna, we don't want it wet, obviously. We can't have it run off the nail, especially with that top coat. Even though you wipe it, it's still smooth. So we can't work too wet. We work very dry. I'm going in with very little monomer and I'm just placing that bead on, giving it a second to set up. So tap my brush, wait a second, and use the point of the brush and the belly of the brush to just spread out those petals. The good thing about working on top of top coat is if you catch it before it starts to set and you don't like it, it comes off very easily. It's not gonna like, oh, I got a file. There's gonna be little residue pieces. It comes off super easy. So we just wanna make four little petals. Use the point of the brush to give the flower a little bit of details because those are things that will really highlight the nail and make it stick out and look more lifelike. If you just give it a little couple dents, it's not just gonna be like a flat ball that's fanned out. Having that, that textured look makes it come to life. I'm gonna repeat the same process using the other color and I'm just placing it anywhere, kind of, just making sure that, again, I have enough space. You always just wanna be mindful when anytime you're doing nail art of your space that nothing is gonna be like overlapping because I still have to put a leaf in here. So I wanna make sure that these beads aren't too big and these flowers aren't gonna be like right on top of each other, unless that's the look you're going for.
So once that's completed, optional, but you can take just any color, any little bright, like it could be yellow, it could be a pink. I went with this rosy pink and super teeny tiny bee. Do you see how small that is? You can barely see it on camera and it's wet. It's more of on the wet side and it's super teeny tiny. I'm just gonna place that to highlight. So if you do what I said before, when you place that bead and you give it some texture, that wet bead of the color is just gonna run right into all those lines and it's gonna highlight it. So what we're doing is giving it a little bit of highlight and it's kind of giving it a little bit of a shadow. And again, I'm just placing that right in there and very wet, just kind of brushing it through the petals and I'm gonna do it for the green one as well. Once that's done, now it's time to make the leaf. So using a nice bright green, take your bead and place it on. In the same way that you would kind of press down to make your petal, you're gonna start that process, but you're gonna wanna use the tip of the brush to kind of drag it so it's more leaf-like. So I'm gonna press down in the, in the center, create a line, and then kind of again, give it texture, and then push the ends in just so it. And when you push it, it automatically puffs up on the sides and you'll really get a leaf-like. And usually I like to press down by using the tip of the brush and again, creating that like leaf-like. So you know how a leaf always has like the middle line and then some lines on the side. So I'm gonna do two little leaves for each flower. For the center of the flower, you could go with a rhinestone, which would be nice and simple, or you can do what I'm doing. I took a little bit of white acrylic and just picked it up a nice little a ball and it forms into a nice little ball. I'm gonna let it hang out for a second on the brush to start to set up. And then I'm just gonna drop it right in the center of that uh, flower. And because I waited, it's basically set and it's almost like a nice 3D, perfect little acrylic ball for each for the center of the flower. So there we have our spring trends, some swirls, a classic high arch French, and some pretty little pastel floral flowers. I hope this video helped you out and get you a little bit prepared for some nail art designs that you could be doing this spring and this summer. Also, don't forget to check out my website. I'll leave a link right here as well. And you can also pick up the products that I was also using in this video. If you wanna check out some other nail art tutorial designs, you can click here, 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 and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching, bye.